Hello and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki. So here's some good news of a small indie game that found success, as well as two lessons that you can take from this. So the developers in this story are Bite Me Games. They launched their first game, Forge Industry, last year. It was a great first game. They did manage to get it to the finish line and actually complete and publish a game. That's a huge success for anyone trying to make games. They made a video where they shared all their results if you want to see that. When I saw this video, I made a comment on it, on my thoughts on it. Basically saying how it's a great success for a first game. So this was a great start. Exactly what you would expect for a first game. Meaning lots of learning, but not necessarily much financial success. After that, for their next project, they worked on a pixel art Chinese mythology roguelike. The goal was to have a short death cycle and work on a genre that would be easier to make than something like an automation game. So that means they analyzed the first project, analyzed what went right, what went wrong with it, and then made those changes and learned what they could to apply to the second game. However, for that project, they worked on it for about four months and then realized it wasn't really attracting players. They joined a Steam Next Fest and only got a couple hundred wish lists. That is definitely a very small amount. It's always very hard to be critical of your own games, but it is a necessary thing. If you're finding it very difficult to get any kind of wishlist, if none of your GIFs or videos get any number of views, if so, then that might be a strong indicator that perhaps your game idea is not resonating with players as much as you think. So when they saw these results, they made the always very difficult decision of canceling a project. They did that as opposed to continuing to spend more time and money working on this. Again, this is always a very tough decision, but sometimes it is the right decision. So they canceled it and got to work on a game called Guild Architect. This one you manage a guild of adventurers. The idea sounds good. It matches their skill set and is a good genre for Steam, but it's also a complex game that is likely going to take quite a while to complete. So in between working on that project, they decided to try out something that I think is a really great strategy that a lot of people should try. They decided to commit to making a game and releasing it in one month. And that game ended up being Unicycle Pizza Time. I think they did very well in picking the right idea. This is a precision platformer game, or perhaps more accurately, it's a rage game. It's got wonky physics, it's got multiplayer, and has a very silly name. Comedy is always something that can work quite well for these kinds of games. It's following a trend that is currently popular nowadays. Games like a difficult game about climbing, the game of Sisyphus and so on. All of these are quite popular nowadays. So this is essentially the perfect streamer bait game. It's the kind of game that has a tiny scope. It has replayability and potential for virality. So great game idea and importantly they started and published this game in 30 days. Now due to all those factors the game has just come out and it's actually finding a nice amount of success. It already has almost 80 reviews. So I'm guessing around 3,000 copies sold and maybe $15,000 in gross revenue. That's a really nice number. They're usually very open with their sales numbers, so I'm sure they'll make a video showing the actual stats for this game. So definitely check out their channel and stay tuned for that one. So they got great sales numbers in just about the first week. And again, this whole game was built from scratch in just one month. Everything here, all from start to finish in that amount of time. And it's already selling more than their first game, which took a year and a half to make. Now I think this is a grinning example for specifically two things. So first, if you're the kind of person who gets stuck in development hell, if you're constantly starting new games and never publishing anything new, if so, then I would highly recommend you start this strategy. Pick a game idea, spend one month working on it, and very importantly, at the end of that month, make sure you publish it. Some people get caught up in some like analysis paralysis. They're constantly trying and tweaking all kinds of things because it isn't perfect, and doing so would cause them to never end up releasing anything. So my advice is to commit to actually publishing a game. If you do, then by the end, you will, well, first of all, you will have published the game, and secondly, you will see how publishing a game is a relatively normal thing. Meaning it is not something that is only reserved to special people, special indie devs and so on. You can take whatever knowledge you have right now and make and complete and publish a game. Finishing games is a muscle and just like with any muscle you do need to train that. And as you do and as you release more and more games, you will realize how releasing a game is really just a normal thing. Don't get me wrong, making a good game, that is a very difficult thing. But releasing a game, when you finally have something, you can definitely go through that process. And doing so, of course, that will help you gain the confidence you need to launch your second game, your third game and so on. Now obviously, for this strategy to work, the main goal is to start and actually finish a game within one month. That is a very tiny amount of time, so definitely make sure you pick a good idea that has a very, very small scope. Meaning, don't try to make a game like Skyrim. Basically, the smaller the scope, the better it is. And when it comes to scope, remember how everyone always overscopes. No matter how much experience you have, if you think you can make something in one month, chances are it's going to take like three or four months. So my advice would be, pick something you think you can make in, let's say, about a week and a half. If you do that, then you will likely pick something that will take, let's say, two and a half weeks. Then you can spend one week on polish, and finally half a week learning about the Steam backend. I think that's a great plan, and I believe you should be able to follow that plan. And the second thing that I believe we can learn from this example is basically about themes, genres, and marketing, and what is popular. In the game marketing is a whole thing. I highly advise you to watch the videos that I did with Chris a while ago. Chris is a Steam marketing expert, and I've learned a lot of what I know about marketing, I learned it from him. So definitely check out these videos on the channel. And if you want more detailed and concise advice, if so, then check out his complete courses. His wishlist and visibility masterclass is really great for teaching you everything you need to know about any game marketing. So the second thing we can learn from this is how genres and themes are really important. Now, when making a game in such a short amount of time, 
In this case, you can't really rely on the usual strategy of gathering 7,000 wishlists. You'd need an insanely good game to get that amount of wishlists that quickly. In this case, Unicycle Pizza Time, they launch their game with, let's say, about 300 wishlists. So wishlists are not how the game found success. Instead, the reason is exactly because of the genre. These kinds of games are hot right now. Streamers love to play them, and a lot of people also love to play them. These rage-inducing games can lead to a lot of virality. So making a game in this particular genre and making it with a very similar name and a very similar premise, I think that really helped them have a successful launch despite a relatively low amount of wishlist. If instead this was a 2D pixel art roguelike game, I do not think they would find these results at all. So this shows the importance of picking the right game idea and the right genre and theme for your game. When picking a game ideas of what to work on next, make sure you spend enough time actually thinking about what game idea you want to make and what game idea could be marketable. Definitely don't just make the first game idea that comes to mind. Especially the longer your dev cycle, the more you should spend on picking the right idea. Now, if you do decide to follow this strategy, if so, then I would advise you to not expect these kinds of results. I think this was very much an outlier. I think this was very successful. I think this was extremely successful for the time frame. So I would not necessarily expect these exact results. But the main goal for this strategy is really just to get a game published. And for that, I really think that a lot of people, perhaps you included, should give this a try. I always talk about the benefits of experience how the more code you write, the more games you make, the easier it becomes and the better you become. So you can decide right now that you're going to publish a game by mid-October. If you do follow this strategy, then I wish you the best of luck with the journey. And if you like super challenging precision platformer games, then check out the game on Steam and check out their YouTube channel where I'm sure they'll be making a video covering all the exact results. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.